Hey, Year 12, how's it going, everybody? Everybody! I am so cool. I'm like the coolest guy I know. <laughs> anyway, so today, bonding lesson seven. So now we're going to be doing graphite uh, and talking about. Oh, anyway, oh no! So today, uh, bonding uh, let's go into that. Oh no, this is working. All right. Tiffany, hi, Tiff. Didn't realize you were going to be here. So I love the fact that Tiff's here before my other students are lolcats. <laughs> oh, I'm so cool. Okay, let's share screen and crack on with graphite. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Now, guys, you have to have a little bit of faith in me here because I've got to do something in this lesson which is kind of a little bit out of sync. Uh, you'll understand why when we get round towards the end of bonding once we've done simple covalent. Um, but it's just, I've just, uh, I just want you to be aware that I've got to do something where you just have to take me on to kind of uh, see it as red that it's true. So 12E, graphite, amazing, lesson seven. It's cool, so AS bonding, AS, let's, uh, let's go for black, AS bonding, AS bonding, lesson seven, graphite, graphite. Okay, so graphite is kind of special. So number one, know its properties. I think that's very reasonable. Number two, be able to explain those properties. Explain properties through bonding and then know the derivatives. Derivatives. Okay, so the great thing is a lot of times this is simply GCSE revision. So what we can now do is just do a subheading, please, of graphite. Cool, so I love the fact that you guys carry this around with you in your pencil cases all the time, and it's what your pencils contain. So we know that graphite, number one, its symbol is carbon and it is solid. Yeah, it's nice for me to, at this point, mention a little bit of organics. Not to Ben, yeah, all otropes. So all otropes are substances, yeah, subs, um, substances with the same, the same molecular formulae but different, different arrangements of atoms. Now, just to tell you, by the way, that this question has never been asked, which is, which is amazing, but they have get asked for examples. So the example, of course, being carbon solid. Carbon solid can be split into diamond, diamond, which we've already covered, yeah, you get the picture. There we go. Diamond and then graphite. They are the same formula, carbon solid, but the atoms are arranged in a different way. Now, at this point, I'm actually going to, you need to understand the graphite diagrams. So we need to do diagrams. So there are two. There are two for graphite. So the first one is this, is this. So graphite forms in layers. So these are graphite, graphite layers. Now, just to tell you, these dashy lines these dashy lines, you guys learned as WIMPs in GCSE, weak intermolecular forces, yeah? You are no longer allowed to call them this. In fact, WIMPs are now deleted from your vocabulary because you now learn at A level that there are three of them. And in Graphite's case, these are London dispersion, I know, I know, forces, LDFs, the good old LDF, yeah, or Van, da, van der Waals, Van der, van, van der, 
Van der, uh, no, Van der Wals. Van der Wals forces. Yeah, that is, it's a different name for the same thing. VDWs. You can actually call them either at Excel, they allow both. So, so, and this is, this is the bit where I said to you guys, you've just got to have a bit of faith in me here. Yeah, you guys just have to learn that between the layers, there are London dispersion forces, or there are Van der Waals forces. You just have to be able to quote this. The next, the next image that you need to learn, yeah, the next image you need to learn is this one. So in graphite, unlike diamond, each carbon atom has an unusual bond number. We know that carbon makes four bonds, but in graphite, it doesn't. In graphite, they make three. Yeah, it's nice to go one more, but not quite perfect. There we go. There we go. I'll do. So each carbon atom. So this is now within the layer. This is now looking down on top of the layer. Yeah. So this is a side way. This one here is a side view. Yeah. And this one here is an overview. This is us looking down at one of the sheets. And what we realize is graphite special, that in the layers, in the layers, these are covalent bonds. And between the layers are Van der Waals forces. Now, just to mention, that the lengths of these are quite interesting. So within the, car these carbon bonds, I'll give or take, oh, this is where I'm gonna get my lengths from, about 132, is that right? No, 152 nanometers? Oh no, carbon, carbon bond length, single bond as well. Carbon, carbon, single bond length. Go uh, 150, so close, 154 nanometers. Now, between the layers, however, the Van der Waals forces are much longer. So let's just do, let's do um, distance, distance between graphite layers. Now, of course, they're going to be longer. There you go. Um, Armstrong's. Oh, come on. Give me it in. Give me. Come on. Come on. I don't want it in picometers. Yeah, they've given it in nanometers. Pico just becomes 10 to the. Nano is 10 to the 9. Pico is 10 to the 12. So I can just multiply it. So the carbon carbon length, they're saying 140 nan, um, picometers. I'm saying 154. Maybe it is shorter in graphite. It's possible. I always tend to quote the bond length of the carbon carbon ones. Oh, it's giving me an Armstrong. It's giving me an Armstrong. Weird. There we go. Oh no, it's giving me once again. It's weird. Maybe the bond lengths are different for graphite in the layers. That's weird. That shouldn't happen. Not that it matters. The point I'm trying to make is it's way longer, nearly double, just so you know. So I'm gonna put a rough one. That's 154. The distance between the layers is about 340, did it say? 340, yeah. About 340. Uh, sorry, that's picometers, not nano picometers. And this is picometers. They're much larger. So it's just nice for me to remind you guys of this. Now, actually, this is probably new to you guys in terms of giving bond lengths. But it's, it's just realizing that a covalent bond is very short, whereas the WIMPs, in this case, van der Waal forces, are much longer. They're much further apart. It's partly why they're so weak. Yeah? 
So you guys have to know this. Now, these images are used to explain a lot of the properties. You guys need to be able to draw these, folks, just so you know. So let's now do the properties. Zoom in. Oh, okay, that's probably a bit too fat. Uh, trying to, it's not moving up. There we go, properties. So what are graphite's properties? So number one, it is soft. They're going to ask you to explain it. Yeah, so we're going to say bullet point number one, forms in layers. Forms in layers. Within the layers, within layers, are covalent bonds. Are covalent bonds between layers? Between layers are weak van der. I'm going to stick with that Excel. They prefer London dispersion, so I'll use that one. London dispersion. They will accept both, just so you know. London dispersion forces. The layers are able to slide. We're done, nice and easy. State the bonds, state which ones are weak, state what that they can slide. We're done. Property number two, it conducts electricity. Now this one is straight out of GCSE. Contru conducts electricity. Right, so let's explain it. So here's what it now looks like. We know that each carbon atom forms three covalent bonds. Well, this is weird, and with other carbons as well. Well, we can convert that into a dot and cross. Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. It's going to form three covalent bonds with its neighbor. And what you realize is there's something odd. This guy, that electron there will hop off. So bullet points, explain. Yeah, explain. Each carbon atom, each carbon atom forms, each carbon atom forms three covalent bonds. Three covalent bonds. Number two, the fourth, the fourth un- paired electron, the fourth unpaired electron becomes delocalized, becomes delocalized and can flow between the layers, between the layers. We're done. So what's happening here is in in the layers, yeah, every carbon atom loses, yeah, the gap's much larger than the bond length, nearly double, yeah, but each carbon atom loses an electron to the C, to the, to the gap, yeah, and these electrons can flow between the layers, carrying the charge through the structure, yeah, can flow between the layers. So nice and easy, yeah. Straight out of GCSE that, folks. Straight out of GCSE. Right, next property. Insanely high melting point. Next. Melting point. Melting point. 4,000 degrees, 3,998 or 90, something like that. I'm just gonna put 4,000, I don't care, it's easier. 4,000 degrees melting point, that's insane. Now we need to explain it. And we explain this using Susan Boyle sings Nelly the elephant, but graphite is special. Structure, bonds, strength, number, energy. Structure, graphite, graphite, is a giant covalent lattice.
Next, the bonds. Now this becomes complicated. Graphite is special. And you'd be did this at GCSE. So number one, there are there are covalent bonds, covalent bonds between the uh, within the layers, within the layers, and London dispersion forces (LDFs). London dispersion forces LDFs between the layers. Now, which one do you think we're going to talk about in terms of their strength for 4,000 degrees? Oh, I wonder. Covalent bonds, covalent bonds are very strong. Are very strong. Number, there are millions, there are millions of covalent bonds, of covalent bonds. Energy, right, hang on a minute. This is the last tricky one for graphite. There are millions of covalent bonds. Lots of energy needed to break all bonds. You must say that word because you are going to break both the covalent and the London dispersion forces between. You've got to smash everything. Yeah, we're focusing predominantly on the covalent because it's a 4,000 degrees. I mean, if, if we were breaking the London dispersion forces or the Van der Waals forces, we're talking about minus temperatures. You know, we're talking about low, like 50s, 60s, like low numbers, 4,000. The only thing we're talking about here is covalent bonds. But with graphite, we've got to talk about them because there are two bonds in the structure. Okay, you're doing really well. That kind of covers all the, the fundamentals of the properties, by the way, at this point. We don't need to go any further. Those are the key ones. And you notice that there are some very odd properties. How can you have a, how can you be soft yet have a melting point of 4,000 degrees Celsius? Isn't that insane? It's proper bonkers. Okay. So that ticks off. Know the properties and explain the properties. Now we need to drop into that, into graphite's derivatives. Now, the derivatives, the word derivatives means spin-offs, yeah? It means something made from de derivatives, derivatives, brackets, things made from, yeah, derivatives of graphite, things made from graphite, yeah? So, graphite. Okay, so here are your derivatives that you need to learn. Number one, graphene. So graphene is a single layer, graphene. A single layer, a single layer of graphite. One layer, one giant layer. Let's have a look at an image. Graphene. See if I can uh, steal an image. Graphene, 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 graphene. One layer, look at that. That's it. There we go. Come on, copy. Copy, copy, copy. Copy, 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 copy. Copy, 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 copy. I can say the word coffee, amazing. So fast. Copy, 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 copy. And go faster. Come on, come on. There we go. Right. So we've got graphite on the right. So here's graphite, 3D structure, but then we've got graphene on the other. Yeah. So a, so from many layers to a single layer. Now what this means is graphene is special because of the three properties of the three properties, 
Brothers. So what we can do is graphite and graphene. Of the three graphite, we know soft layers slide, high melting point, break all bonds. I'm going to put a high MPT, make it easy for myself, and conduct electricity. So the question is, which ones travel over to graphene and which ones don't? So on the chat, please, which there is one of those properties no longer exists with graphene. Which one? Let's see who's listening. Who is still listening? Hello, are you listening to my lesson? Yeah, it's Lionel Richie, if you're wondering. <laughs> Hello, sorry, I'll stop. Uh, soft, well done. So soft no longer happens. We've still got crazy high melting point, crazy high MPT, and we've still got conducts electricity. Yep. And the great thing is, the explanations for these are the same. Explain. Same these. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. But the property of soft vanishes. There are no longer any layers, which means that the layer can no longer slide. Now, just to mention, by the way, high melting point. That one is, um, I'll take that all back. The, the, this one is the same. So in terms of the explanation, these two are the same. Same explanation. However, in terms of high melting point, these are not the same. So hang on a minute. How is it going to change? I think it's fairly understandable which bit changes. For graphene, that vanishes. And that's it. That is the only difference. Not in graphene. Just ignore it. Just skip it. For graphite, yes. But for graphene, no. Because it's only got covalent bonds in the layer. That's it. Still 4,000 degrees. Crazy high temperature. It's actually a better conductor than graphite, which is super cool. Yeah, the, the electrons kind of skim over it. Yeah, if you've got your little electron, they kind of skim over the surface, like, like, a, like, a, like a stone skips on the pond of, of water. Whereas with graphite, what the electrons do, see if I can actually do this. Yeah, what the electrons do is they bounce up and down between the layers. So you lose some of the energy. Whereas in the graphene, it skips like this. So you can see you lose less energy in the vertical direction. It actually conducts better than graphite. It's one of the best conductors we actually have. It's unbelievably good graphene. It's amazing, super cool. It's so thin you can't see it. It's an invisible layer. It's the future of touchscreen technology, definitely. So we've got graphene ticked off. Next one, next derivative. Nanotubes, yeah, carbon, I'll be better than that, carbon nanotubes. This is nanotechnology. Now, carbon nanotubes, let's find myself a picture. Hello, hello, internet. Give me carbon nanotube. Nanotube, please, hello, hello, look at that. Graphite rolled up. Looking for a good one. Let's go for that one. Let's go for that one. Quite like that one. That'll do. Hello. Hello. Gonna steal you. Copy. Hello. So carbon nanotubes are really cool because what we learned is we discovered that we could take the graphite and we could roll it. We could roll it into a tube. How cool is that? So this is like an electrical wire similar to wires. Now, the great thing is what properties still exist? So we can say, do, do all of our graphite properties still apply? Is it soft? 
soft question mark? The answer is yes. Explain. The tubes, the tubes can roll over each other. Tubes can roll over each other. Guess what forces are between the tubes? VDWs. Yeah. I'm going to put bullet point uh, London dispersion forces in LDFs. LDFs between the tubes. Between the tubes. Yeah. So, yes, it is still soft. What about it's conducting electricity? Conduct electricity. E minus, the answer is yes. Same explanation. Same as others. Each carbon atom forms three bonds. The fourth unpaired electron hops off and can flow through the tube. Slightly different, slightly modified, ever so slightly. Yeah, flow through the tubes. So next one, melting point. It's very high. Melting point. MPT is, is it high? High MPT? The answer is yes, it is. It is still a giant structure. Yeah, these tubes are millions of atoms long. They're not short, tiny tubes. They are absolutely massive. So the answer is yes. Explanation. Tubes, tubes have a giant covalent structure. Have a giant covalent structure. There are millions of bonds to break. There, there are LDFs and covalents within the, uh, as within the tubes. Yeah, we're going to have to break them all. Lots of energy. You get the point. So all of the properties for, for graphite actually apply to nanotubes. It's quite nice that. Yeah, crazy high melting point, similar because they're soft and they still conduct electricity. So everything applies for carbon nanotubes as applied to graphite. Last derivative, buckyballs. Buckyballs. Otherwise known as Buckminster fullerenes. Buckminster fullerenes. Now, Buckminster fullerenes are the footballs. You'll probably remember these from GCSC. Buckyballs. 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 There you go. Like oh, I quite like that image, being the fact that they've actually built one. Yeah, now these are quite the kind of funky things, these. These are, um, they are of interest currently in the research world, spe specifically for medicine. What they're realizing is the buckyballs can range anywhere from C60, so 60 carbons, up to about something like C60. C200. So you can make a baby buckyball. You can make a baby buckyball and you, you get the point. Or you can make a big one. Yeah, you can make big buckyballs. Yeah. And what we've realized we can do is we can put stuff inside them. It's kind of cool that. Put stuff inside. Stuff inside. It's kind of funky. Now, the great thing is, does it conduct electricity? Mm, not really. The electrons tend to occupy the inside of the ball rather than the outside of the ball, so they lose their conductivity. The electrons can't hop between the balls. They're not a single unit. So let's run the properties. First one, soft question mark. Guys, do you think buckyballs are going to be soft on the chat, yes or no? Well done, Anch. Absolutely correct. Yes, they are. They are soft because the balls can roll over each other. Balls can roll over each other. Each other. They've now started adding this, by the way, to um, F1 race car engine oil. Yeah, this is one of the applications is Formula One race car 
race car um, lubricant oil lubricant F1 race car lubricants. They're adding it to oil because it's incredible. The melting point's insane still. Actually, it's not that high, actually, to be fair. But you can't destroy the balls. You can separate the balls. Um, so it becomes, it behaves like a fluid. But you can't destroy the balls themselves. So the balls are incredibly inert. Yeah. These are like graphite and all nanotubes and graphene is inert. Yeah. That's another property. Yeah. They don't tend to do much. Very unreactive. Um, but the balls can move over each other, and they're, they're as hard as diamonds. It's like having microscopic diamond beads that are going to then be able to act like a lubricant and things can roll over them and move through them. Uh, sorry, move, move around them since they act as the, the balls between it. So next one, conduct electricity. No. Conduct electricity? And the answer is no. The electrons cannot move between the balls. They are isolated to the ball itself. Yeah, if you had it in a paste, it wouldn't surprise me if it did. It wouldn't be a good conductor. It wouldn't be a good conductor, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did. But the answer is no. They are not a single, they are separate units. The electrons can't flow between the balls. They can't just hop over. Yeah, electrons, I'm going to make my pen a bit thicker. I don't know what the quality is like on the YouTube, to be fair. Uh, electrons cannot jump between balls. Between balls. Last one, high melting point? No, low melting point. High MPT? No. Yeah, we've got the, we've got van der Waal forces, yeah, or London, Dispersion forces, LDFs, yeah? I should never really do that. I'm doing it because I've said it earlier on that London dispersion forces, you can't call them LDFs in your exam. London dispersion forces, brackets, LDFs, yeah? London dispersion forces between the balls. Between the balls. These can be broken. These are easily broken. Low melting points in the hundreds. It's possibly like 200 degrees or something. Something like that. C60 is quite large still. C4 is zero. So this is still going to be a couple of hundred. But it's but this is low. Should we actually find out? I'm just curious. Let's actually do that. Let's do C60 buckyball. C60. This is, by the way, the original. C60 fullerene. Fluorine melting point, MPT. Go. Ball. Uh, that's really not helping me. Melting point. Melting point. 280. There you go. C60. So, 280. Very low. Simple covalent. You're going to break the LDFs between the balls. Yeah, that's all. Right, guys, that, that there is one more derivative, just so you know. There is one more, which is, ugh, I don't really like teaching it. It is part of A-level. It came up twice in exams. So there is one more, but I don't want you guys to worry about this one. This is an extension, really. They have done it, but they only did it once. No, they did it twice. Um, and this is called graphene. Now, graphene, what they do is they took graphene, they took graphene and added hydrogen. Graphene, there it is. So they took graphene, one layer, and they added a hydrogen to each one of them. I'm trying to find the best image that helps explain it. And you can see the best. Uh, maybe that one. Maybe that one. There we go. So as you can see, the graphene layer, which was like this, you can see it's completely flat. Hexagonal. You can even give some more information about our diagram. Go back to your diagram up there for 
the graphite, what we realize is we've got a bond angle. So here, the bond angle between these bonds here is 120. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, this bond angle here is 120 degrees. Yeah, they're flat. The whole thing is completely flat. It's often described, the word flat in chemistry, you're not allowed. The word flat in chemistry is planar. I know chemists, I get it. So we start off with super flat, flat graphene, and then if you add hydrogen to it, all of a sudden every carbon gets a hydrogen. And what it's doing is it's completing that fourth bond. We know that the reason why graphite is special is because each atom involved, each atom involved has three covalent bonds. Here's the carbon atom, and they've got three covalent bonds. Bond angle is 120, and it is planar. Now, what they do is they do a really sneaky trick, which is they add to it. They stick on top. Problem is it that if I use that one as the example, I can use a different one. If I use this one, it makes more sense. Check this out. So here's the carbon atom. It forms three covalent bonds and it's planar. Yeah, that's 120. And what they now do is they add a, a hydrogen atom. I want to go back and delete that. Undo, undo. I want to stick with the pencil. I like the pencil picture. So if they now add an, a hydrogen atom to each one. So let's do that now in white. Check that out. So they add a hydrogen atom to each one. Now what's really cool is every time they add one, one goes up and the next one goes down. So the next one would have a hydrogen atom. I'll switch back to gray. Yeah, uh, that one. So the next, this one here is going to have its hydrogen atom going down. And it, by the way, when it does this, the shape changes. And all of a sudden, the, the whole sheet becomes kinky. Yes, that's what I said, kinky. So we've actually got a shape here called tetrahedral. Yeah, I think I mentioned this in a previous lesson in terms of diamond. Ah, oh, there we go. So it's showing that one goes up, one goes down. And it's really nice. And as soon as you do this, so I'm just going to make a few bullet point notes on graphene. And I'm just, I just wanted to be aware that it exists. It's very, un very unusual for it to appear. But what they've done is they've taken your, your graphite sheet. Yeah, if you, if you have a look at graphite, graphite's formula Graphite's formula is C, graphane's is CH, solid. Yeah, that's its formula. Because every carbon in the, in the sheet gains a hydrogen. That's the very famous image. It was actually, that, that picture there was on the exam. It's on that one. And this is the empirical formula if you're interested. Yeah, there we go, graphene. Now, the reason why graphene is of interest is because it's actually very good at being able to filter out salt from water. Um, but one of the things is it no longer conducts electricity. Conduct, no. No. The reason being is the fourth electron is no longer delocalized. Instead of the electron in this, instead of the electron of the carbon being able to hop off and flow over the layer, what's now happened is it's being used in a bond. Yet the electron is now here. That's the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. So it's no longer able to conduct. They kill the, they kill the conductivity outright, absolutely. Um, no delocalized electrons. A fourth electron, fourth electron, fourth electron, instead, instead of being, instead of being delocalized, is now localized. Instead of being delocalized, it is now localized, <laughs> localized to a bond, brackets, CH bond. So can no longer flow, can no, 
can no longer flow. It's neat that, uh, as I said, it's come up a couple of times in the exam. I think it's come up twice now. I'm only making you aware of it. It's super, super rare. That actually brings us to the end of graphite, brings us to the end of its derivatives. I'll post some questions, all the beautiful graphite questions that have happened over the years. I'll put them all in a booklet and send them out to you. But that brings them to the end, that brings me to the end of my lesson, which is spot on, great timing, love it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. There are some really cool applications of, of graphite and its derivatives these days. Obviously, graphene is going to be the future of touchscreen computers. So currently, on a mobile phone or a touchscreen, you have a wafer-thin layer of what's called indium tin oxide. And that indium tin oxide is, is a very complicated structure but can conduct electricity. Now, the problem is that indium is actually a very rare element and it's running out. In the next 10 years, it's going to be gone. So we're going to have to replace that structure, that that indium tin oxide layer with another layer that is still incredibly tough and durable, yet con conductive and incredibly thin. So graphene is going to be the future of touchscreen computers. We're gonna replace that thin layer uh, with graphene instead. And at the moment, we're just struggling to be able to print it. In terms of carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotubes have got the future in replacing uh, electrical wires in motors. So your electrical wires are going to go from being from using heavy, thick copper metal wires, and copper has an AR of 63.5, to a carbon nanotube, which has an MR of 12. And all of a sudden, your, your electrical wires go from being, you know, um, millimeters thick to being nanometers thick. So instead of having a motor kind of this size driving your car, you could have a motor which is this size driving your car and producing similar kind of outputs, which is insane. The other thing, of course, is carbon nanotubes are also being looked at in terms of materials and rope. So, you know, you're talking about a fiber here that's as tough as diamond, but flexible. And that's amazing. You could make bulletproof vests out of this stuff. And it would be, it would be light as you wouldn't even be able to feel you wearing this stuff. Because um, they're going to weave these these tubes into into fibers, and those fibers spun into a vest. Uh, is the effic efficiency better in carbon nanotubes? Oh my God, yes, Harry. So if you look at the conductivity of a copper, and you can actually, I'm, oh, I'm not entirely sure how you measure conductivity. I don't actually know what the units are. Harry, you're the first person to have ever asked me that. So hang on a minute. I'm just going to share my screen again. I'm curious about that. So so let's do copper conductivity because there must be a there's going to be a measurement for it i don't know what it's called though uh all so copper has siemens per meter that's hilarious you've got to admit that's pretty funny yeah it's how many semen that you can put down the wire at one time per meter so yeah yeah it but you've got to remember, you've got to take the hat off the semen, otherwise they don't fit quite so well. I'm going for that meaning of the word semen rather than the one that you guys are all thinking of right now. Let's ignore that. So anyway, Siemens per meter. So copper is a fantastic conductor. That's good. That's a high number. Look at 10 to the 6 Siemens per meter. Let's do carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes, conductivity. So the other one was 10 to the 6. It can be as high for pure carbon nanotubes, 10 to the 8. That's a hundredfold better. That's insane. A hundred times. Right. So just to put that into perspective. So people often ask, what would be the function of that particular outcome? Well, all of a sudden, if it conducts electricity better, then your losses are less. It has a higher efficiency, just as Harry said. What that means is if you replaced all the electrical wires, which are based on copper in your mobile phone, if you replace them all with carbon nanotubes, the efficiency is 10 times higher and your battery is extended by a, at a very large percentage. You know, you're gonna get a big increase in the amount of efficiency that the loss of through the wires is gonna be reduced and all of a sudden you get more out of your batteries, which is super cool. Such a nice thing, just, just by replacing them with better materials, you're gonna increase the efficiency and the life length of your battery. That's one of the big in, in, improvements that will go from these. Um, 
Carbon nanotube ropes is really cool and fibers. They, I, they love the idea of the bulletproof vest uh, being woven from carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are being struggled in terms of us growing them at the minute. Uh, it's quite difficult to grow really long tubes. They tend to break. But we're getting there. Every year they're making advancements on these things. And I think there was recently, let's just uh, go back to sharing the screen. Um, because if you look at recently, carbon nanotube rope, check it out and go to news. Let's see what they've hit recently. So mystery solved. Why do certain materials emit electrons? Okay, that's not quite what I was hoping for. Carbon nanotube rope. Let's have a look. Um, there's usually an article about someone who's managed to actually build a better rope. Yeah, so um, advanced technologies, understanding, art, rubbish. Let's actually go to images and we will see one. There you go. Carbon nanotube ropes. They're doing this stuff. Now, just to tell you just how awesome this material could potentially be. So if we were managing to grow entirely singular, if we could grow entire tubes that were completely uniform, yeah, and then weave them together, we would have a rope as strong as diamond. Now, what that means is, if you've ever looked at bridges, now bridges, I'm just gonna show you these now, bridges use huge steel ropes, bridge cables, yeah? So the bridge cables use enormously thick wires. I want to show you bridge, bridge cables person. I wanna compare it to a person. Come on, somebody stand next to one of the, look at the cables. The cables are insane. You know, and what the, the reason why is because they're using steel. So you can see the size of the people compared to the thickness of the cable. And these cables need to be incredibly thick because it is simply trying to get, it is trying to get to the point where you can hold up a bridge and all of its content. Well, imagine taking a cable, which is a meter and a half thick of steel and be able to reduce it down to that, yeah? You could take a cable that thick of pure carbon nanotubes and you could reduce that and you could still carry the weight of a full bridge. This material is unreal. There's huge potential out there for this. We've just got to get to the stage when we can grow it and grow it well consistently and with a reasonable cost. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave you be at this point. I will see you all soon and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. See you later.